Alright guys, so here I'm going to solve uh, 2B mesh. I already solved 2A using mesh, so here I'll do 2B and real quick I'll just uh, run it in SPICE. This is the circuit. Um, and then I'll write down those voltages, so let me go ahead and write VB1 is negative 3.46 volts. VB2 is supposed to be 0 0.77 volts and VB3 is obviously 2 volts. That should be obvious to you because of the way the power source is connected. If at this point it's not obvious to you that this voltage is 2 volts, you definitely need to go back and do some reviewing because this power source is uh, minus terminals connected to ground, so the plus terminal voltage is just whatever the rating is of the battery. All right, so let me go ahead and define my current. I'm gonna go through this one a little bit quicker than I went through the last one since it's the exact same process. I'll call this my I3, I'll call this I2, and I'll call this one I1. I'll go with my plus minus in the direction of my currents like I do always. And now I will go ahead and start with my first equation. Well, first let me split the page just in case I need extra space. All right, so my first equation is going to be I3 equals 2 milliamps, and that's because, again, I defined I3 in the same direction as my current source that's in that loop, okay? Now that's, uh, that's going to go ahead and be my first equation, so I'll make my second equation now, and my second equation I'll, I'll derive from this loop, the second loop, and I will go ahead and go up 2 volts, and then I drop across this 1K, but I have I2 and I3 flowing in the same direction, so it's going to be minus an I2 plus I3 times 1K, and then when I drop across the 2K, I have I1 and I2 flowing in the same direction, so I can add those times 2K equals 0. And now I'll go ahead and simplify this equation as far as I can before I make the other equation. So this is I2 plus 2 milliamps uh, times 1K minus I1 times 2K minus I2 times 2K equals 0. And now this is going to be 2 volts minus I2 times 1K minus 2 volts minus I1 times 2K minus I2 times 2K gives me 0. And now notice that this plus 2 volts and minus 2 volts, uh, they subtract each other out, so that's gone. And that's okay. Some people got a little worried about that. Um, it's totally fine. It doesn't invalidate this equation at all. Um, so now I'm going to group my like terms. I get uh, minus I2 times 3K equals I, I1 times 2K, and now I divide both sides by 2K. Those cancel, and I get that I1 is equal to negative 1.5 times I2, right? So that's an equation. Uh, we don't know I1 and we don't know I2, but we do know the relationship uh, between them. So now uh, let's go on to my third equation. See how much simpler this is to look at than this big thing, right? So it, for me, it helps to simplify the equations uh, before I go and make the other ones. So that's the simplest form of this equation. And now the third equation is going to be derived from this loop right here. Some people didn't like that this loop doesn't have any voltage sources or current sources, but it works exactly the same as any other loop. You just take into account all the voltage drops. So first I drop across this 3K. It's just I1 times 3K. But again, it's a drop, so we, it's minus. We drop across the 5K. Uh, that case, um, the 5K, I have I1, but I have I3 moving in the opposite direction. So I would subtract I3. That's times 5K. And then lastly, I drop across the 2K, and I add my I1 and my I2 because they're traveling in the same direction through the resistor. Right? All right, so now uh, the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and simplify this equation so I can plug in again I3 for uh, or 2 milliamps for I3 right here and then over here I can just say minus I1 plus I2 times 2k and I'm going to go I1 
times 3k, I1 times 5k, and then that gives me a plus 10 volts, right? The distribution there. Minus I1 times 2k, minus I2 times 2k gives me 0. Now I'm going to go ahead and group my like terms. So I've got a 3k I1, a 5k I1, and a 2k I1. So that gives me 10k. Right? And then I've got a uh, a minus I2 times 2k and I've got a plus 10 volts alright so now uh, I can go ahead and I can plug in uh, this equation uh, for I1 in this equation right so I can rewrite this as instead of I1 negative 1.5 times I2 and then that's still multiplied by 10k. Minus I2 times 2k plus 10 volts gives me zero. So uh, this was like the, the simplest form of equation three before we start plugging in. Just I underline the simplest form of equation two, the simplest form of equation three. So I'll go ahead and just note that. Now, uh, if I work this out, that's a plus 1.5 times 10k is gonna give me 15k times I2 and then I have a minus I2 times 2K uh, plus 10 volts equals zero. That becomes 13K I2 equals negative 10 volts. I divide by 13K and I get I2 equals whatever 10 over 13K is. So it's gonna be uh, negative 0 0.77 milliamps. All right. So now I've got I2, I've got I3, uh, but, and I also have an equation for I1 in terms of I2. So I can plug this I2 into uh, my equation for I1, and I can solve for I1. So I'll just write that up here. I1 is basically negative 1.5 times negative 0.77 milliamps. And let's multiply that. And I get 1.15, basically. I1 is equal to 1.15 milliamps okay so I've got I1 I've got I2 or sorry I've got I3 and I've got I2 down here so now I've got all three of my currents I can go ahead and find my voltages I already know VB3 right off the bat this is a battery connected to ground which makes this voltage 2 volts right not, there's not much deep thought uh, there like I said that's VB3 alright so what about VB1 VB1 the only current that's flowing through it is I1 Okay, and we had the direction right. The direction was correct, so I know that the current's flowing this way, which means this voltage is higher than that voltage. And my current, I1, is 1.15 milliamps. And I think uh, it's actually 1.154, I rounded, but if I go ahead and multiply that by three, then the drop across this resistor becomes uh, 3.46 volts. And so if I drop from zero volts by 3.46, I get negative 3.4. 46 volts for VB1. Oh, I just knocked the camera. Okay, and that matches what Spice got for VB1. Okay, so now the last one I need to find is I need to find VB2. And the current flowing through this 2K can be used to find VB2 because I know that this is zero volts, right? So the current is I1 plus I2. Well, I1 is 1.15, so let's say VB2 again is equal to I1 plus I2 times 2k alright well that's gonna give me a 1.15 milliamps minus a 0.77 milliamps times 2k because I2 is negative so let's go ahead and do 1.15 minus 0.77 and then I multiply it by 2 and that gives me 0 0.76 uh, with with rounding, that's literally about the same as 0 0.77 volts, which is what Spice got. So I can check that off, and now that is this problem solved using mesh.